Story 1. GF admitted to cheating on me and now claims it was actually Saw. Some background. My GF and I have been dating for 5 years. We have been friends since I was 16 as I was good friends with her brother at school. Once her brother and I finished school we lost contact due to moving to different towns for university. I came back into contact with her after studying and in a new city for work. We almost spontaneously became good if not best friends again. We started dating after a year of getting to know each other but due to work and her studies we were forced to move to separate cities again. We had decided that since we somehow found each other again, we will try make the relationship work long distance. I knew it would be hard and I assumed she did too, but I was committed to making sure I was in a stable position financially to set up a life together for when she was done studying. I have tried to be supportive as best I can with anything she wants to do with her life and whatever path she wants to take through all the ups and downs. Five years in and we are finally in a good position where we are both ready to move in together. It has not been the smoothest journey and I admit to many mistakes and problems I have caused in the relationship that have no excuses. None of which I believe to be relationship threatening though. But of course, that is just my point of view and I could very well be wrong. About three months ago on a Friday during one of our afternoon videos calls she lets me know that she is going out with her friends for one of their birthdays. I have never had issues with this as this is a normal thing. I want her to enjoy her life as much as I believe she does for me. All I ask is that she lets me know when she is safe at home or at a friend's house, so that I don't worry about her safety. She lets me know at 3 a.m. that she is at her best friend's house and will be staying the night as she is understandably too intoxicated to drive. I reply happy that she is safe. Normally I get a couple of messages after letting me know how the night was, but not this time. Later that day, I get a message saying she's not feeling well and that she is sorry for being quiet. I brushed it off as hungover but next three days just seemed to be one-sided conversation with myself with very little feedback. I should say that I have been cheated on before, but I don't like comparing two completely different people and generally try give people the benefit of the doubt first which is something she has actually complained about. I will admit however, it was difficult to not let my thoughts wander which I admit before knowing anything was wrong. The Tuesday evening after that very silent weekend, I get a phone call from her. I can hear she has been crying but she is now trying to just compose herself. She almost immediately tells me that she cheated on me. Honestly, I was just stunned, and I just replied what? She then repeated herself. The moment is so vivid in my head I don't think I will ever forget any moment of it like it's burnt into my brain. This hurt far more than before as this was someone I truly love and saw a future worth building with. After a long silent pause, she asked me to say something. I couldn't feel anything like as if my life just drained from me in an instant. I then replied with I guess we are over then. She then instantly began begging me to stay and that she knows I will never forgive her but that I should please not leave. She promised that she will be completely transparent with everything and that she will answer any questions I had with complete honesty. I sat for what felt like forever just listening to her beg and cry for some reason I just couldn't put down the phone. I thought since she did come to me first before anything else and didn't hide it, I should at least hear her out. She then told me everything with a lot of detail. She explained that she was severely drunk. She was at her friend's house and there was another guy that came with someone she was talking to the whole night. The guy was best friends with her friend's BF and was down from another town and staying there for the week. Randomly her friend and BF decided to go to bed leaving them alone. She decided to make herself comfortable on the couch and attempt to get some sleep before the sun came up. This is when she messaged me. The guy then proceeded to make a move on her and she for some reason didn't stop him. She said there was no intimacy just SX and after 5 minutes she stopped it. When I asked her why she didn't stop it before anything happened and did, she enjoy it at first. She told me that she felt very lonely that night as most of her friends had their BFS and in that moment she enjoyed the attention. I won't lie that answer really gutted me. I felt partly to blame as I have always feared that being in a relationship with me would make her feel lonely, but I never thought it would push her to this. I silently broke down without her knowing and eventually just ended the call with I need to think about things. We continued to talk, and I treated her more like a friend than being in a relationship but I think she respected that as she just went with it. We continued to work through things and eventually after 2.5 months, I paid for her to fly up to me to actually talk in person about it all. At first things were okay, but after her flight back things got bad. We started fighting often. She started accusing me of things I do wrong all the time. What was worse, after our last disagreement, she has now claimed that she actually got sawed that night three months ago and that I never supported her. Her entire story of that night has changed and her claim to why she explained everything the way she did before was because she was just confused and didn't know what to think. Now every argument I feel it gets thrown in my face along with other things like it's getting used against me. And if I question it then I'm calling her a liar and I'm not supportive. I told her that if she truly believes that she got sod then we must take it further and I will support her by hiring a lawyer or she could at least tell me where to find the guy. After all what kind of man would I be to let a literal RPIST get away with something like that especially with the person I love. She then just tells me not to push her and I must just drop it. 
My issue is that for three months I have struggled with my own mental health and the reality that the person I love would do something like that to me after everything. And it took a long while for me to accept that reality and move on. But now I can't, because not only has it changed, it is also now getting used against me. I honestly don't know what to do anymore as she is still pushing to move in with me and as much as I would like to move on and just accept what she is saying, something is not adding up. Any advice on this would be appreciated. Sorry for the long post. Story 2. A ghost of Christmas past I wish stayed there. While I was stationed overseas, my wife started talking to an ex of hers. She put me through some pretty rough moments with that but didn't cheat, physically, that is, according to what she told me. She did cheat later down the road, but she said it was talking and texting only at the beginning as her ex was in another state. She told me it was only once she physically saw her ex and did the deed with him when he came in from out of town. We are currently going to couples therapy with the intention to make things work. However, she asked me to forward her some emails from her laptop to her work email. You know when you use a booking agency for traveling you get on their mailing list. She's been getting advertising emails, all unopened, from those agencies, but with her ex's name in them. She hasn't opened the 100 seconds of emails, and she hadn't filtered them into spam or unsubscribed from them, but I saw his name. I browsed through and saw he had made more trips to my hometown than the one time she admitted to and, for a duration of time, stayed there. Now here's where I'm feeling all sorts of emotions. She admitted to cheating once. Emails show this guy going to visit her more often than she said he did and a visit took place when she said they were only talking at the beginning. I don't know how to go about questioning her about it or even if I should. I feel like the progress in therapy just collapsed in front of me today. I haven't even confronted her about it. I'm conflicted if I should. I hate this. I feel like everything I tried rebuilding just collapsed like a heap of dry leaves, especially getting so close to the holidays. Update, confronted her, acted civilly in order to make sure that I didn't give her ammo, and I got gaslit throughout the conversation. These are some of her responses. What do you want me to say? I already got over it, so should you. Yeah, I feel bad, but what? Do you want me to put on a crying performance for you? I'm not going to cry for you. Why is digging up something we're working on matter so much to you? Do you want to look good or something? I didn't know you were perfect and levitating over everyone else. You want to be right. Fine, you're right. Happy. What do you want me to do? Feel bad. I already did. Yeah, I'm moving on. No kids, just a couple of pets. Both are mine. Got them before we married. I deserve the truth when reconciliation was on the table when we first started therapy. Now, my piece is far more important than picking up the pieces of a failed relationship. Reader comment, you should have waited to confront her until your next MC session. During the session it would have been better to print her travel itinerary, confront her with the proof, and let the counselor see how she treats you and her lack of accountability. Original poster, I'm still going to do that. Reader comment, I'd save my money when it comes to additional MC sessions. What's the point? Give the money to your lawyer instead. There's nothing left to work on with her. At least some semblance of remorse and accountability are required for that. She just doesn't care about you or about how her actions affected you. Original poster, the sessions are already paid for. I'm going to the final session with her my final session, that is, making the call and getting as many answers as I can. Reader comment, not sure who your therapist is, but recovery cannot truly begin until the last lie has been brought to light so he, she dropped the ball there. Doesn't sound like your wife ever stopped lying to you. Doesn't sound like your wife has any real remorse either. Cheaters are selfish, cowardly losers. Some recognize their faults, own up to their actions, and actually try to change for the sake of themselves and those they love. Your wife chose to continue lying, continue betraying you and the relationship and basically made a mockery of all the work you have put in this past year. She simply wanted you to just get over it and pretend it never happened. Screw her. You deserve better. Original poster. The thing is, we had those is there anything else you want to say, add or put out their moments in therapy and nothing. Just repeated her initial story. There is nothing new in sessions in that department. Story 3. Absolute and utter betrayal. I still think she's a good person, but I don't know how to ever move past it. I'm going to try. I don't even know where to start. I don't know if I can handle typing out a complete story. But basically, 1. She is trying to leave the Mormon church. 2. She was sick for 5 years after being absent on her mission. 3. She was arranged marriage to an incredibly absent man divorced as of a couple years ago. We've been dating for over a year. 4. She has been physically assaulted by at least two people. She has trouble standing up for herself and saying no and is working on it. She is easily scared of men. 5. The person she had the affair with is a man who is almost a billionaire, and they trauma bonded while she was sick. He is autistic and eccentric, doesn't really understand social cues, and fell for her immediately. They distanced from each other when I started dating her. But he had an almost comically bad string of people near him die, so he became needy and clingy and would message her. Long story short, I did something to piss her off. 
He took advantage of that moment of weakness and made a move on her during a cruise. She doesn't drink or anything, so this was completely sober. I could forgive this, but it happened again multiple times on a next trip that I encourage her to go on because it could be good for her career. She told me she was pregnant. She didn't tell me it was his. She had to get surgery because it was ectopic. I thought she was going to die and I was so worried. I was worried that I killed her. Between the pregnancy test and finding out it was ectopic, they had SX multiple more times. She said she loved him back because he said it to her and was being pushy. I know he was pushy and manipulative, but she definitely had feelings for him, partially trauma bonding and because he could make all of her problems disappear. He threatened to delete himself when she tried to break up with him. I remember all of the lies, the past month has been my worst mental health month ever, and she neglected me because of the guilt and continued to spiral into that shame spiral and sleep with him more. I'm not posting this because I want you to tear into her. She knows how despicable it is. I know how despicable it is. But she's completely breaking off contact with him despite his threats. She and I are perfect for each other despite this gigantic effing betrayal. It sounds crazy at face value, but we truly fit for each other. The thing is, I have been the cheater before in a past relationship. I understand the guilt and shame spiral. My experience with cheating has shown me how the dichotomy of I love this person completely and I want to have SX because it's right here can exist in the same brain without conflict. So, I'm going to forgive her, once, and I'm going to hold myself to that. I just don't know how I can bring myself to trust her ever again. But I'm going to try. How can I do it? It's just so effing out of character for her. I feel like I don't know her at all. It's completely unlike her to just completely disregard me in every way and lie repeatedly. Again, don't tell me to ditch her. I know her better than anyone here, of course. And I know she's remorseful and wants to die because she feels so guilty. She is going to find a therapist for her and a couple's therapist for us. She's going to share her location with me all the time that we're not together and give me her logins. I don't intend to use these, but I see steps in the right direction. I'm just so effing hurt and lost and pissed and just completely numb. She has more issues to work through in therapy. And I truly, deeply love her. And she truly, deeply loves me. I've been in fake relationships, and I know what it's like. But I just want to undo it. Read her comment, is she divorced or is she still married? Original poster, separated. That and the Mormon thing are intertwined. It's a long story but he was Abu's V, and she tried to not get engaged, but he gaslit her family and RPD her repeatedly. It really effed her up emotionally between that and being neglected and becoming mortally ill on her mission. She has been to so much therapy and she is constantly improving. But this was on another level, and I never expected it. Edit, to clarify, this was chronic illness, and she was delirious for years, barely functional. They wanted to marry her so she could get sealed to someone. 